Hello, and welcome back to Narrative Driven Fashion Design. This is part two, Electric Boogaloo. This is all about concept development. If you haven't seen the first part, I'd strongly recommend that you watch that first because it gives you the underpinning to uh, these concepts. Uh, so I'll be giving you some examples of concepts based on the Narrative Driven Design uh, project that we that I explained to you, and the example that I've been using of Gary being a climate change refugee. So let's jump into concepts. So this is my first concept, concept one. Now I would recommend uh, developing three or more concepts. This will allow you to have some variety to choose from, but also gives you an understanding that um, you can broaden your horizons a bit more. Now with any concept, an easy way to articulate it is through these three things, a message. So that is what you want to say. So in this case, how we make clothes must evolve with uh, the change of climate is the statement I as the designer want to say. The next we look at the intent. So what is it you want to happen as a result of what you say? Now my intent here is for brands to design circular clothing uh, processes where old garments are exchanged or redesigned um, uh, out of post-consumer waste. And then lastly, our audience. Who do we want to say it to? Who do we want it to have an impact on? So in this case, middle-aged consumers of Timberland who think sustainable fashion is ugly. So people a bit like Gary. My second concept is message. Clothes are only valuable when they have a function. Maybe the function is beyond the uh, aesthetic. My intent for this concept is to create garments that are sustainable and function perfectly for the wearer. Now that's harder than you might think. And again, my audience, someone a bit like Gary, but not necessarily totally Gary, are middle-aged consumers of Timbland who purchase clothing infrequently. I remember Gary only bought clothing twice uh, every year. My last concept is that clothes are only valuable when they give us an emotional connection. Now, certainly for someone uh, fleeing their homeland, uh, Traditional clothing or clothing that remind of the homeland um, is something they may well hold on to for a long time. So that emotional connection is important. My intent is to create garments that are sustainable um, uh, and are kept and worn until they disintegrate uh, because they create an emotional connection. Oh dear, I said the create an emotional connection there. And our audience is middle-aged consumers of Timberland who want a wardrobe that communicate their identity. Hmm, don't we all? Again, a bit like Gary, who wants to communicate who he is and where he's from and what he's all about on his journey. So once we have developed our concepts, we need to test them. So we test our ideas, our research and concepts back against the brief. And we ask ourselves the following. Do I have a range of garments? Remember, the brief asks us to design a range of garments. Are they sustainable? Remember, the brief asks that our processes are sustainable. Are they ethical? Remember, we had to adhere to the ethics of Timberland. Do they align with brand? What were the ethics of Timberland? Uh, Timberland? What were the aesthetics of Timberland? And did we adhere to them? And do they align with the consumer? Would someone like Gary purchase these garments? Do they do the things they need them to do? And do they say the things they need them to say? Of course, we're talking about visual communication here. So in order to really get under the skin of this brief, and understand the concepts more fully. After we've tested them, we should get some feedback. So we should seek feedback from the client. So in this case, Timberland, your peers, other designers, other practitioners. They don't necessarily have to be fashion. Um, they can give you a really, some really good feedback. Your audience, so our consumer in this case, maybe people like Gary. Then once we've got that feedback, it's important that we act on the feedback. And we can act on our feedback by trying out new ideas to fill the gaps. We can test new materials against the brief and our processes. We can push things as far as they go. It's really, really, really important that we find out the boundaries of this brief. So we have to push things as far as they're possible to go. Remember, we're looking for our best solution to the brief, not our first solution to the brief. We can explore extremes totally throw ration, rationality out of the window and go crazy, try a bunch of different stuff. Now, uh, we need to act on that feedback by doing some more further research and development to fill in all the gaps that we've identified through our feedback. Research, create, test, feedback, act. A really great set of words 
for us to adhere to in a design process. Now, design processes are all about cycles and we'll typically move, move through them several times in any design project. It's important to recognize that design isn't linear. You move forward, you go back, you move forward, you go back, you change direction, you come back and you move forward again. The key to success with design is to understand that it's a process and that project management of the process is part of good design practice. Thank you very much for listening. Please follow us on Instagram.